Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Various speakers presenting at the recent Nuclear Africa 2016 conference highlighted the benefits of nuclear energy. Keith Campbell tells us more. Hi Keith. How does Nexa CEO Pumzile Shalane expect South Africa's nuclear build program to stimulate industrial growth in South Africa's coastal regions? Uh, Pumzile Shalane made a very interesting argument. But before I get on to that, I should perhaps point out that Nuclear Africa is a conference focused on nuclear technology uh, and nuclear energy, uh, not on financing. So the uh, question of the financing of the country's plant, nu new nuclear power plant uh, program uh, was not addressed at the conference and was not addressed by Shalani. Um, in a sense, it's not surprising because we have absolutely no idea what kind of financial packages South Africa is going to be offered by the vendors. And until we find out about these financial packages, we have absolutely no idea uh, how affordable the program is likely to be, or how unaffordable the program is likely to be. The other point that Chalani highlighted is that currently it is still official policy that South Africa will acquire uh, 9.6 gigawatts of new nuclear uh, electricity generating capacity. Now, there have been suggestions that this should be cut because South Africa's power electricity growth uh, rate has reduced. Uh, this raises all sorts of questions about the country's economic growth rate about uh, the effects of ESCOM's uh, crisis on depressing growth and de depressing the increase in electricity demand and so on and so forth, which are also beyond the scope of the Nuclear Africa conference. But shall I point out, officially, the policy is still 9.6 gigawatts of new nuclear power. Within that context, he pointed out that these large-scale new nuclear power plants will be built along the coast because they need access to large quantities of cooling water. Now, it must be stressed that this water uh, is not used to cool the reactors. This water does not go through the reactors. It does not become radioactive. This water is used in heat exchanges. Uh, now, because the reactors are going to be built on the coast. Consequently, it makes a lot of sense to try and manufacture as many components as possible in coastal regions, uh, which are closer to the reactor sites than Gauteng is. Gauteng, of course, is the country's industrial heartland. But moving large uh, components from Gauteng to the coast uh, would be complex and difficult. Whereas moving them along the coast, they can be put on ship and moved from harbor to harbor, it would be much simpler and easier. So that's why he uh, argued that the new nuclear program could be used to stimulate uh, industrial development in the coastal regions, remembering that it is government policy to have as much localization, local content in these new nuclear power stations as possible. ESCOM's executives also argued the need for more nuclear energy generation capacity. In, indeed. In, in, in fact, it was a paper delivered on behalf of ESCOM CEO Brian Malefi, who was due to attend the conference but unfortunately proved unable to do so. In his paper, Malefi argued that while ESCOM was very proud of its commitment to renewables, renewables could not meet the country's base uh, load electricity requirement and the country needs a base load uh, uh, electricity requirement. And that nuclear thus had a very important role to play in delivering this base load nuclear requirement. He also made an interesting argument. Uh, he said that overseas studies had indicated that construction of new nuclear power plants was not only affordable, it could actually be cheaper than the alternatives, coal, what have you, provided it was done on what's called a fleet basis. That is, the country buys a number of reactors of exactly the same design. And that this could, that this uh, would make, uh, could make the program affordable. 
and competitive with any of the alternatives. A private South African company has also revealed that it is developing a design for a small modular reactor. What can you tell us about that? Well, the company concerns called Steenkamp's Kral Thorium Limited. Uh, it also has uh, a thorium mine it's reactivating in the Western Cape. And it has developed a concept design for what it calls a high temperature modular reactor, which belongs to a category of reactors called small modular reactors, SMRs. Small modular reactors are a uh, kind of generation four reactor, that's the latest generation. And this is a new wave of smaller uh, reactors. The con concept is that they would be manufactured in factories and key parts, including the entire reactor vessel, would be carried to the site and erect to that site. They would not involve huge uh, civil construction projects like uh, with large reactors. Now, this high temperature modular reactor is based on the expertise South Africa gained with the now effectively terminated pebble bed modular reactor program, the PBMR. Uh, Steenkamp Kral's um, reactor design is, in fact, a PBMR design. Uh, the PBMR concept was developed originally by the Germans, uh, though they're no longer active uh, in the area, and they licensed it to South Africa and to China. Uh, South Africa terminated its PBMR project, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, the Chinese have continued to, to develop it. And uh, Steenkamp's Kral is trying to revive a PBMR program in South Africa. Because they're a small company, they've got the concept design and they're working on the nuclear fuel at the moment, but they don't have the money to take it further forward, so they're looking for partners, investors. And of course, they're also excited uh, by the, uh, but it's currently the big game in town as far as small modular reactors are concerned. That's the British government's uh, competition uh, for a SMR design that would best suit British needs. Uh, and this competition is going to be launched this year. And uh, I believe that the British government has budgeted 30 million pounds for it. The only drawback from the South African point of view is that nearly every major nuclear company in the world, including Westinghouse, including Rosatom, including the Chinese, have their own SMR designs. And there are a couple of com companies which are not active in the larger reactor designs, but which have developed SMR designs of their own, one of which uh, is Rolls-Royce. Uh, Rolls-Royce is responsible for the small nuclear reactors used by British nuclear submarines. So there's going to be a lot of competition for this prize. Currently, there are no operational SMRs anywhere in the world, though the Chinese have a tiny experimental PBMR unit that's operating in uh, the outskirts of Beijing. And sadly, South Africa's PBMR design, if it had been continued, would now be by far the most advanced SMR project in the world. And we might actually have operating PBMR unit, or we'd be very close to having an operating PBMR unit by now. Uh, South Africa was years, perhaps a decade or more ahead of everyone else when that program was terminated. But uh, there's no use crying over spilt milk. Uh, Steenkamp's Kral is trying to pick up some of the spilt milk, put it like that. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.